Next, we'll stay cold. Uh, we're going to travel right over uh, now to Alaska, uh, to the Red Mountain Project. Um, so to hear from White Rock Minerals, would you please welcome the Managing Director and CEO of White Rock, Matthew Gill. Uh, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for taking the time to stay back for the last talk. I made sure that I wasn't standing between you and a beer, um, but I probably still am anyway. So I'm going to talk to you. We have two projects, um, one in Alaska that we that is the main topic of my talk, but also a significant precious metals project in northern New South Wales. And now clearly I'm biased as the, as the managing director of the company, but I'll put to you a few points that I think is important for you to consider as a potential investor, if you aren't already. Um, That'll go to the projects, the people, and I think the upside potential. We're a little bit different um, to the previous presenter in terms of our zinc project is that that exciting exploration growth stage, and the project in New South Wales sort of falls in between. This presentation is on our website and lodged with the ASX as required. Um, I'm giving you one minute to read that. I do make no apologies for making forward-looking statements because as a uh, junior explorer looking to the future, we of course look forward. Uh, I'll touch briefly on what White Rock Minerals is, the commodities that we're in, why I would like you to consider it as an investment opportunity, and I have a booth at the back um, if you want to catch up afterwards, uh, a bit about the people and then our assets. So the two assets that we have, one is in northern New South Wales, two hours inland from Byron Bay. It's an advanced gold and silver project. It has a jork resource, it has a jork reserve. Uh, it's on mining lease, uh, a genuine opportunity within three years to producing gold followed by silver. Um, great part of the world and uh, one that cornerstones White Rock. White Rock was listed, listed with this asset uh, back in 2010. Two years ago, though, we came across a high grade and um, Mark's presentation was really uh, good in that space to put um, this project into perspective. Uh, and he might need to update his database on that because I didn't see it in there. Um, but it's in Alaska. Uh, it's a polymetallic, so it's more than just zinc and lead. It's also got significant quantities of silver uh, and gold. Maiden Jork resource last year, put it in the top quartile, the grade, put it in the top quartile of undeveloped zinc projects in the world. Uh, half a, 100 kilometres or half an hour due south from Fairbanks, and I'll put that into geographical uh, context, um, uh, and Fairbanks is the second largest city in Alaska. So the three commodities that we cover, uh, a zinc, and uh, I agree it is in demand, and I'm not going to make any forecasts on whether we're running out or not, um, but certainly uh, it is one of the better performing metals of the last few years. Uh, we, the VMS project in Alaska also has significant quantities of silver, uh, as does our project in New South Wales, uh, and both projects also have significant quantities of gold. And in fact, if you add the two Jork resources together, um, you get significant metal endowment that sits as assets within the White Rock Company. Almost 700,000 ounces of gold, 76 million ounces of silver, to put that in perspective, is the equivalent of 1 million ounces of gold uh, in value. Uh, significant tonnages of zinc uh, as well as lead. So the Red Mountain project was private and unlisted for 15 years. Uh, we acquired it two years ago. The Maiden Jork resource done by Rungi in Perth uh, delivered 12.9% uh, zinc equivalent. Now, I will explain that uh, in a future slide, but because it's a polymetallic uh, deposit that consists of zinc, silver, lead and gold, all in economically recoverable components, to try and put it in perspective against some of our peers, we normalise those other metals to a zinc equivalent. Um, and you've heard that is 5% the, the new 10%. Well, we're even above the, the uh, old 10% benchmark. And it's that grade that has make, makes this project a significant interest to us with significant upside. It hasn't had any modern exploration in the last 15 years. Uh, and so we think we've got it all before us this year. And I'll explain what we're doing there. 
I think as an investor, news flow is also important, and we're responding to that, uh, but we're doing that to advance this project. The news flow happens to be a byproduct of what we do, but I think it will be particularly exciting. Um, and I'm not the last MD that will ever stand before you and tell you that we are undervalued, um, but I will compare you to our peers um, on the ASX, and I'll let you draw your own conclusion. Diversity, I think many investors don't quite give sovereign risk the uh, consideration that it should. Uh, and I've worked in the Altiplano of Bolivia, uh, in the highlands of New Guinea with some of my colleagues here. Uh, I've worked in Myanmar, and if all I have to worry about is a winter in Alaska, uh, I'm more than happy to be in a jurisdiction like Alaska. Um, again, I'm biased, but we have a, a well-experienced board. Again, I'll just put the people up on a slide and you can form your own conclusion. Um, but not to forget, we have a significant project in New South Wales with a, uh, a reserve feasibility study on mining lease. So this is our peers, and I have to check whether um, Ironbark is in there somewhere, but certainly Red River, uh, New Century, um, Heron, Consolidated Zinc, a lot of the ASX players. Um, and when you com and this is all public domain information, we are the red circles. Um, one might say the managing director is not doing his job properly if you're so undervalued. Um, but that shows the upside, I think, uh, for an investor. And you can see where our grade is. It's, it's second to none on the ASX. Um, I'm a mining engineer. They do say that. You heard it earlier. I think grade uh, is critical. Uh, I think, you know, quality over quantity uh, in, in, in any case. And that opportunity for value uplift. Our work program this year is aimed to unlock some of that and hopefully you as an investor or potential investor will hopefully share some of my uh, excitement in that space that we'll be able to do that. If you remove the value of the zinc in our portfolio and just look at the gold equivalent, again, we sit with, with all of it before us in terms of moving to the left compared to our peers. Brief snapshot, uh, 1.8 million in the bank. We, uh, have, we're in the middle of a capital raising, so our share price um, fell to that price. That's just the way it is. But I have no doubt that the use of those funds, and hopefully you'll agree, will see that quickly turn around and re-rating uh, imminent over the next few months. Uh, a, a good, uh, no debt, um, strong shareholder base, uh, no one owns more than 10%, and as I mentioned, the two projects that we have. A board of five, a little bit unusual, we're all trained, well, four of us are trained mining engineers, but that's probably where it stops, the, the, the breadth of experience. Um, many people might know Peter Lester, M&A, uh, Oxiana, he was chairman of Kidman, chairman of Dore. Uh, Brian Phillips was chairman of MPI and took it to a billion dollar market cap. Many people will know Ian Smith. Ian was previously the MD of Newcrest, the world's largest, third, world's third largest gold mining company. Uh, I'm the boy with 30 odd years of experience and then a finance chap as well. So even though we're badged when we did university as an engineer, you know, we've seen the gamut from exploration uh, development, operation, capital raising, you know, we have to keep the lawyers in check, um, deal with accounting, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, there's been some comments that it is top heavy, yes, as engineers, but I think the diversity and the skill set around that table is second to none. But of course, I am biased. So where are we, where are we in Alaska, central Alaska? The Maiden Jork resource released by Rangi uh, last year put it immediately in the top quartile of undeveloped zinc projects in the world. That's not, that's not my words, that's uh, independent research world's words. And as I said, at just under 13% zinc equivalent. One of the beautiful upsides of this, it was private, unlisted, last drilled by a TSX company uh, in the 1990s. Uh, modern exploration techniques, uh, airborne EM, on-ground EM, uh, geophysics, other geophysics tools, geochem tools, haven't been applied to this project for over 10 years. Not many people know about Alaska. They think it's Grizzly Adams and what they see on Discovery Channel. Um, we, we sit nicely surrounded by the major highway system in Alaska. Uh, Anchorage to our south, um, Parks Highway is the major rail and road link, all weather to Fairbanks. 
Just outside Fairbanks is the Fort Knox gold mine that most people will have heard about and also the significant Pogo gold mine operated by Sumitomo. So we're in a good jurisdiction. It's rated in the top 10 of the Fraser Institute. The only Australian state that gets in the top 10 is WA and the rest of the top 10 is rounded out by um, Scandinavia countries, um, US and Canada. It's a, it's a great jurisdiction, um, very mindly friendly. As I said, infrastructure, um, less than 100 kilometres from, from Fairbanks. Uh, a road is about 80 kilometres that will go in eventually. Between now and then, it's a single Cessna, half an hour flight out of uh, Fairbanks or a chopper. State claim, no First Nations, native title issues, no salmon uh, issues to worry about. One of the deposits is called Dry Creek. Um, we're not in the site of the cruise ships. They've been some of the issues that have faced many projects in Alaska. Uh, we're fortunately free of most of those. When we acquired it, it was 16 square kilometres with two known deposits sitting in a basin that used to be uh, underwater. A VMS system, if you've seen videos, are smokers, plumes that come off the seabed uh, and over time form these deposits. The theory is that they come in, in clusters, in camps. Um, and so we obtained the public domain geochem and geophysics data and said to the experts, where else in this field that was all vacant do you get a similar response to those geochem and geophysics as you do with these two known deposits? So that's what we had, two known deposits. We got the public domain information that I mentioned. It identified 30 similar targets to the two known ones. So we expanded our footprint out to 140 square kilometres. So not only do we have a maiden jork resource that's significant, we have 30 similar targets. It's had previous early stage MET test work that shows it to be good recovery to concentrate. Uh, and there are some significant drill hole intersections within the, within the drilling that's already been done. 30 to 60 metres wide in places, grades of zinc alone over 20%. Um, and that's before you consider uh, numbers that look like 700 grams per tonne silver, which is the equivalent of 10 grams a tonne uh, gold. There's significant lead there as well, as well as um, gold in its own right. So a wonderful suite of polymetallic metals, both base metals in lead and zinc and precious metals. This is the Jork resource, um, so a global tonnage. I, I think the important point is within that there's a high grade, 9 million tonnes of 13% equivalent. And the comment that I'd love to have picked up on and I'm picking up on now is the opportunity for lower tonnage but higher grade and where you sit on the cost curve. And that was a point made in the opening speech. Uh, and I think that's a very important um, asset to consider. We already sit compared to our peers equal to Heron uh, with their Woodlawn project. So size of the bubble is the size of the asset. And you want to be in the top right hand corner, which is the grade. Uh, we're already bigger um, and equal to the Thalanga uh, asset that Red River has. Uh, New Century is in there, much bigger in metal content but lower grade and there are some really um, exciting big uh, zinc assets in, in, in North America um, and this is a comparison of our TSX peers. So what are we doing? Well we're in the middle of raising five million dollars, we've raised three and a half. Um, we're going to be on the ground, we already have the camp and the drill as we speak. Um, we'll be drilling within a fortnight, the geophysics and the geochem uh, within the month. The news flow that will come from that is significant. Um, and then at the back end of that drilling campaign, we will move the drill off the known that's expanding the known resource uh, to go and test and hopefully discover more of these, test some of these 30 uh, targets that we have. So the news flow, the money is straight into the ground. And interestingly, within the area of drilling, there are lots of immediately identifiable walk-up targets for testing. So that's a photo of the terrain. We, we dragged uh, 70 tonnes of drill and camp uh, on an ice road. Um, to give you an idea, across three frozen rivers needed fisheries, uh, Alaskan Fisheries Department approval. Uh, and we dragged it through part of a US Army range. Um, so we needed US Army approval. That took less than a month you would never get that sort of permitting uh, even in WA. Uh, so very positive. That is the Alaskan range, but we're in the foothills of that, so we're not, you know, thousands of metres of altitude. Um, that's us dragging our gear, and on the right is where the camp will be at the airstrip. 
Just an example of what the lenses that we know look like. Um, pretty much go underground, uh, broad zones, some great intersections and really good grades. That's a plan view to show some of what we're targeting. So this is all mapped out for the program that's going to commence in a fortnight. And this is the other deposit that we'll be targeting. So you can see we're targeting known areas for extensions at depth and along strike. And the geophysics and geochem opportunities that will then follow. Not to forget our other child, you're supposed to love both your children equally. Um, the Mount Carrington asset uh, is a solid project, gold and silver. It's had previous mining. You walk onto ore in the bottom left-hand photo. It's got a tails dam, water dam. It's got state power. Uh, it will be a project of state significance. It's got 18 months of approvals, 13 months to build. we would be producing gold before the end of 2020. It's, the photo on the right shows uh, past mining, state forest. Um, it's got a jork resource. Um, it's got a jork reserve. Um, so well understood metallurgically and engineering wise, uh, the permitting is the next major step before us. It's got opportunities to drill more, to add more gold resources, and there still sits within the jork indicated category uh, over 8 million ounces of silver. So there's at least five years of gold, followed by probably at least another three years of silver. So in summary, hopefully you've got something to think about, the investment opportunity in a significant zinc project in that exciting exploration stage that starts in a fortnight. Um, the growth and the news flow from that. Uh, jurisdictional risk, I think, is an important consideration. Um, satisfy yourself on the competency of the board to deliver and our past experiences in doing exactly that. Um, and cornerstone by, cornerstone by you know, a decent gold and silver precious metals project in New South Wales. Thanks very much.